Hi, I'm Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge, and today I'm going to take you on a marsh hike. That's right, you're going to need your virtual waders to go on this hike. We're going to head into the wetlands and check out the wonders that it offers. I love wetlands, and if you know, I really like the frogs in the wetlands, but today we're going to explore some other things about wetlands, some of the plants and wildlife. Wetlands are fabulous. So let's take a look at some cool wetlands around the refuge. Of course, as you know, wetlands are filled with plants. Sometimes the water can be kind of stagnant, so you have to be prepared for the mosquitoes too. <laughs> well, wetlands, um, when you think of wetlands, I bet you think of some of the animals that go with it, like this Canada goose and their little goslings. Wetlands are a great place to see wildlife. But the plant that you probably think of is the cattail. And in Minnesota, we have two different kinds of cattails. There's our native cattail called the broadleaf cattail, and there's also a non-native cattail called the narrowleaf cattail. And these two cattails have created a hybrid. Um, that hybrid cattail, Typha glauca, is one that is really kind of taking over a lot of our wetlands, as is the narrowleaf cattail. We see a lot of those as well. And that can kind of be a problem for some wetlands because it takes up so much space. A little bit about the cattails, as you know, cattails can get set pretty good into the marsh just underneath the water. They like to grow in shallow marshlands and they grow um, the hairy like parts there are the roots of the cattail, but coming off to the side is the rhizome of that cattail. And those rhizomes can make a mat um, underneath the water in that muck and not let other plants grow. So you get kind of this nothing but cattails in there. And what we really like to see in wetlands is a lot of different plants. So this is what it looks like when it's just cattails. This is one of the lakes on the refuge called Chippewa Lake. And this is really starting to fill up with cattails. That's almost all you see not a lot of open water in this case. And what we really want to see is a variety of plants and a really healthy wetland can be like 50% open water and 50% vegetation and a variety of vegetation. You can see a few cattails in here, but also a lot of other grasses and sedges and such. So cattails can be a problem, but there are a lot of animals that still thrive in areas where there's cattails. Another plant that you might think of is the bulrush. So bulrush, and this um, later in the summer as it comes out of the water, will have a little bit of a flower on top. So that's our bulrush. And they're kind of a nice, um, thick, straight, uh, grassy-like plant that comes out of the wetlands. You probably also think of the sound of wetlands <laughs> Um, you might be thinking of the red-winged blackbird. Pretty common, and they can be all over. I'm sure you've heard the sound of the red-winged blackbird. <laughs> they really have, <laughs> can have a... Um, pretty can be pretty boisterous in the wetlands. So that is the red-winged blackbird. But we also have one that's really special if you can see it, and that's the yellow-headed blackbird. So watch for those. Yellow-headed blackbirds also have a pretty boisterous call. Right, so that can be pretty loud. Um, and that's more of a, has kind of that double call after underneath, underneath it. So like the, the red-winged blackbird will say, oh, wee Well, this one will have kind of that, oh, the wee wee oh, the wee wee sound to it. <laughs> 
So yellow-headed blackbirds, and these are usually found in areas that are very and really open areas compared to the red-winged blackbird, which is pretty much everywhere. Well, another one I always look for is the common yellow throat. And this little bird is so fun to see, and they're really all over the place, the common yellow throat. Um, so any kind of wet area that you might uh, be around, you probably have the common yellow throat. And this one makes a call that's like, uh, kind of sounds like, witchity, witchity, witchity. Let's listen to the common. There it is. Now, if you're like me and you're kind of sneaking up the marsh, you might scare the common yellow throat, and then it has a little bit different sound. <laughs> it likes to make that when you walk up on the common yellow throat. Obviously, you can tell it's a common yellow throat because of the mask across his face and all the yellow on it. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> now here's one that also has a pretty fun call. This one is the marsh wren. Now it might look big here, but it's actually a pretty small bird. As you know, wrens can make quite a racket. The marsh wren, well, it can make a bit of a racket as well, and hangs around between the bulrush and cattails and um, plants. It's funny how its long legs can stretch in between <laughs> those plants. But what a song. <laughs> I always think it's the bird that sounds so busy in the marsh. <laughs> marsh wren. Now, of course, you can't jump into a wetland and not enjoy the flowers. Blue flag iris is one of my favorite that starts blooming. It's such a nice tall plant and really spectacular blues that come out of the flowers of blue flag iris. And of course, this is one that you might plant in your backyard as well. So there's a lot of different varieties of irises, but our native one is the blue flag iris. You also find wild calla lilies. Now these are pretty small. They only grow maybe six or eight inches out of the water, but like that beautiful flower that you might see at weddings and things, the calla lily. This is our wild calla lily and it likes wet feet. One that uh, I was kind of surprised to see um, is the cotton sedge. When it starts to bloom, you're just like, wow, what is it? <laughs> it's got such a neat little cotton top to it. But we do have this around the refuge and in Minnesota. So you might see these little cotton balls all over the wetland and know you're into the cotton sedge. <laughs> well, here's a bird that uh, you probably won't see. This is a pretty unique photograph here because usually we just hear this bird. It's called the American Bittern, but you might know it as a different name. Named after this great call. Kind of a kerplunking sound, don't you think? <laughs> well, because of this sound, some people have called it the smooth pumper. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know how it makes that sound so clear and loud, but it's got a voice box that is really big and can belt out that great sound. Well, the Virginia rail is one you might not know about. Again, you never see it but it does hang around in the marsh grasses along, you know, underneath the water. So you, you will hear it, but you won't see it, generally speaking. And this is the Virginia rail. Here's what the Virginia rail is. <laughs> now, when I first heard this song, 
I thought, wow, that's the weirdest frog sound I've ever heard. <laughs> it's not one that I recognize. But of course, it is the Virginia rail. Another one that's also a rail, but we just call Sora. Sora, again, one that you'll hear, but you'll rarely ever see it. So pretty, pretty uh, neat sighting if you do catch it. And you'll know because you see that, those big yellow legs and that yellow beak, but it is kind of a small bird. I bet it only stands about five or six inches tall. Here's what the story is. <laughs> Have you heard that in the mo also associate our wetlands and um, edges of the lakes with the great blue heron, probably kind of the tallest maybe, next to the trumpeter swan, of course. But the great blue heron is one that um, is so great to see. You might even hear its wings kind of hit the bulrushes and cattails as it takes off. But if you've ever heard the sound of the great blue heron, well, <laughs> You might not want to hear it again. It's kind of scary, I think. Now that's a gruff call for such a beautiful bird. Another one that we see a lot of, but people wonder what it is that is the green heron. They're actually pretty common in our area. The green heron, it's not quite as green as it is kind of a dusky blue, but green herons are also hanging around our wetlands and fishing just like the great blue heron, kind of lurking around to stab with its beak a fish or a frog, or even crayfish, things like that. Here's what the green heron sounds like. <laughs> what a neat bird. And more flowers. You just never know what kind of blooms are going to happen next in the wetlands. The swamp milkweed, gosh, one of my favorite flowers. It's so pretty. It just really lightens up the edges of the pond when it starts to bloom. Later in June into July, you'll see swamp milkweed. Beautiful flower. And of course, we can't not talk about wild rice when you're talking about wetland areas. And we'll maybe talk a little bit more about wild rice later because they have such a great story. Well, off into the wetlands you go. <laughs> and hopefully you'll get a chance to get out and take a closer look at what we can find in these beautiful wonders of a wetland. So come on out to Tamarack Refuge. It's open, the trails are open, fishing access is open. It's a great place to enjoy the summer. And who knows, if you look really careful, you might even see trumpeter swans on their nest, like this one right here behind me. <laughs> we'll see you out at Tamarack Refuge.